സെവൻറ്റീൻ ഇയേഴ്സിലാണ് ഞാൻ ഇവിടെ പോളണ്ടിലേക്ക് വരുന്നത് പോളണ്ട് എന്ന യൂറോപ്പിലെ ഒരു രാജ്യം കേൾക്കാത്ത ഒരു സിറ്റി പക്ഷേ ഇവിടെ വന്നു സിക്സ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ഞാൻ ഒരിക്കൽ പോലും റിഗ്രറ്റ് ചെയ്തിട്ടില്ല ഈ കോളേജ് പഠിക്കണം എന്നുള്ളത് ഞാൻ പറയും ഐ എം സോ പ്രൗഡ് ടു ബി എ ഫോർ ഓഫ് എൻ സി യു അത്ര ഹാപ്പിയാണ് ഇന്ന് ഇവരും പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ തന്നെ ഒരു റിഗ്രറ്റ് ഇല്ല ഇവിടെ പഠിച്ചിട്ട് ഞങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരും മൂന്ന് പേരും ഞങ്ങൾ യു കെക്ക് ഞങ്ങളുടെ എല്ലാം റെഡി ആയിട്ട് നിൽക്കുവാണ് സക്സസ്ഫുള്ളി കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് ഇപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ എത്തി നിൽക്കുന്നു and a special good morning to the professor from Poland good afternoon professor hello good afternoon can you hear yeah. me okay yes i can hear you sir yes oh and now you can see me yes we hello. can see you yes yes i think you start we are very much yes, honored that you spent your first half of the day so the beginning of the day with us i know that we you are a very busy person but uh, you have you are ready to spend the time for our students from india always with great pleasure thank you very much for kind invitation and as you know we have some of the indian students from india i mean here in uh, our medical school so then we'll talk a little bit later about that yes yes so i once again uh, welcome you to the session and i welcome uh, many of the schools who have committed to participate in this webinar and the students individually uh, shown the interest to be a participant in the webinar so today we are going to uh, discuss about the possibilities of medical education in the central europe especially the special curriculum which is uh, followed by the central europe in medical universities which is inclusive of poland that is a beautiful possibility of the students who wanted to become a specialist doctor that we have in india we have a separate education system that we have to go through the bachelor's degree program the undergraduate degree program at first then have to be in the queue for a master degree uh, program in the medicine in the, in the area that they wanted to be become specialist which is very tough that uh, we have had at least 16000 only 16000 seats all india level but we have always every year we have around 8 lakhs of medical graduates competing for the 16000 seats so it is it is uh, very crucial for the students to listen to this opportunity uh, i'm happy that many of the sto- uh, schools are already uh, participants in the webinar uh, as part of the uh, promotion of this w- webinar i could visit almost 20 to 25 schools and all of them shown the interest unfortunately this is the time for them to prepare for the uh higher secondary the final examinations so we couldn't find all of them to become the participant but many of them are already in and many of them are uh trying to log in so uh, i think this is the time that we can start with the session i know that you are also busy professor is also very busy with uh surgery and the medical procedures in your hospital so i think if we shouldn't wait we can start great i had to postpone a little bit my surgery because as you know i am a vascular surgeon but anyway i am very very happy to be with you and um, we'll see how i can present i have a small presentation about my medical school so if you allow me uh, so jin how we can manage this i i'm open to to share my screen with you and then i can just say a few words about my medical school if you if you allow me please please go ahead sir you are already a co-host you can share the screen Okay how can i screen uh, how can i share the screen wait a moment good can you see now yes sir i think you can maximize the screen yes of course i will do it in a moment and okay can you see perfect. yes sir perfect okay so may i start yes please go okay ahead. ladies and gentlemen once again thank you very much for your kind invitation i am very honored to be with you and i am going to present to you the ludwig ridig Air Collegium Medicum in Bydgoszcz, which is belonging to the Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun. Um, as you can imagine, uh, the Poland is much, much, much smaller than India, but uh, we are located in the center of the Europe. So I'm going to show you some facts about first from Poland and then my medical medical school. Um, yeah. So this is the map of Poland and if you see here the population of Poland is about 38 million. So it is probably the only one province in in India but anyway this is the sixth biggest country in Europe. The area of our country is a little bit over 300,000 square kilometers. And what you can see here the capital of Poland is Warsaw. 
But Bitgos is the eighth biggest city, and I'm going to say a few words about my city. It is located in the uh, north central part of Poland, and the picture is showing you the center of the city, what you can see here. It is a, one of the most beautiful buildings. Unfortunately, this is not our medical school, but this is the Opera Nova, uh, a very important um, picture of something that is important for my city, because my city is well known for double M. That means music and medicine. But being a doctor, I should say medicine and music. Anyway, for those who are interested in music, you will have also a possibility to come here to Opera Nova, which is at the bank of the river. And the river is called Brda River. You see, it goes through the city. It's a beautiful place. And of course, you can enjoy uh, some performances in our opera house. Uh, this is, again, a bank of the river with uh, nice buildings, as you can see here. And this is Opera at the bank of the river uh, in the night. So this is how the Bitgos looks like. And this is aerial view of our city. This is again the Opera Nova. This is just the center of the city. This is the old market here. And you will be asking probably where is the medical school? And look here, somewhere like three kilometers from the center of the city, there is the most important part of our medical school. There's the university hospital number one. Uh, this is a new building which was just built um, 12 years ago. We have a very nice hybrid room and obviously being a vascular surgeon, I am promoting a little bit of that what is very, very new and very modern. And with this beautiful uh, operating room, hybrid room, we can do obviously the most modern vascular procedures just watching at the screen it's me at the at the table of the operating theater and obviously looking at the screen we can do certain operations the main administrative building what you can see here is written in polish and latin the university of nicolaus copernicus collegium medicum named by ludwig Rüdiger. Uh, in Bydgoszcz, I will say a little bit more about Ludwig Rüdiger later on. This is the main administrative building. Uh, this is in the center of our city. Few words about the history. The medical university was founded by the Parliament of the Republic of Poland on July 21st in 1984. So it's easy to count and say that this year we are celebrating 40 years of our medical school. But 20 years later, at year 2004, our Academy of Medicine, because that was the previous name of our medical university, was incorporated into the Nicolaus Copernicus University in Toruń. And Toruń is the city which is 40 kilometers south from our city, but now Collegium Medicum is under umbrella of the Nicolaus Copernicus University. So that's a very short history about that, what has happened here. The patron of our Collegium Medicum is Ludwig Rüdiger. This is a very important man. He was born in 1850 and uh, he died at 1920. He was one of the most famous surgeon. Uh, he was professor of medi medicine. And uh, you ask me why he was so famous? Imagine in a very small city, very close to our Bydgoszcz city, only 40 kilometers north, in the place called Helno. In 1880, he performed the first ever gastric resection for the stomach cancer. That was 1880. And then in 1881, he performed the first operation for gastric ulcer. So for years, he was well recognized as a pioneer in gastrointestinal surgery. And that happened in the private clinic only 40 kilometers north from our city. So this is the reason why our medical university, as well as the Collegium Medicum currently, is carrying the name of Professor Ludwig Rediger, a very famous person. You can see some remains uh, after his operation, not only in the Helmno city, but also in our medical school. So what about the Collegium Medicum? Let's see some numbers. We have all together over 6,000 students 
including 392 right now international students. The staff is uh, uh, quite big. It's around 1,300 people involved in teaching and doing research. As you see here, we have three faculties. Uh, we have 17 different programs in medical sciences, and the number of PH programs is five, and the area of the uh, campus is 5.05 hectares. Um, that obviously includes also the university hospitals and so on. And number of accreditations by different uh, other, uh, not only countries, but bodies is over um, 11 right now. What is the academic profile? As you can see here, we have three faculty and very soon, probably next academic year, we'll be also having dentistry in our medical school because now we are preparing all the facilities. So probably October the 1st this year, we'll be starting the first year of dentistry in our medical school. But so far we have the faculty of medicine, faculty of pharmacy and the faculty of health sciences. What you can see here underline, these are the parts which we are teaching in English. So in the Faculty of Medicine, apart from the other directions, we have medicine, we teach them in English. In Faculty of Pharmacy, we have laboratory medicine. We have also right now Faculty of Health Sciences, nursing and physiotherapy. Last year, we decided to change laboratory medicine because unfortunately there was not many people applying for that part and we started pharmacy. So right now we have medicine, pharmacy, nursing and physiotherapy. If you are interested in one of these four possibilities, obviously you are welcome to join us and apply to our medical school. Let's speak about the medicine because this is the part which is attended by most of the applicants. The duration is six years that took altogether 12 semesters. You will obtain the master degree in medicine and obviously for those who are coming from European community our diploma is valid all over the I think now 28 European community countries so you do not have to pass any additional examination because our diploma is valid if you want to uh, work in UK or the especially United States and Canada, then obviously you will have to go through the verification. And in, in the USA and Canada, you will require to go through the US MLE examination. These are the courses included in medicine. As you can see, there are several different things and that also in the operating theater as well as in the other places like anatomy, because I used to say to my students, anatomy is the queen of medicine medicine. You need to know the, the anatomy well if you want to be a good doctor. Physiotherapy, this is five years, 10 semesters, and the degree which you can obtain is also master degree. There are different activities, and you see, as, you, as you can see here, the courses include different fields, and again, anatomy is playing an important role, and I have to say that we have a fantastic facilities for anatomy and majority of the students are very happy in comparison to the other medical school. Nursing, this is a growing part. There are more and more people coming to study nursing in our, in our uh, medical school. It, it contains of two possibilities, first three years, and then you achieve the bachelor degree. Or if you want to go further than additional three years, you can get a master degree. And again, the courses included, you can see here, anatomy is again an important part of that study. Obviously, if you want to study all these fields, the very important thing is practical education. And what you can see here, we are very happy to have students with us in the operating theater. We have a very nice simulation center. And obviously you can be trained in simulation center to uh, reanimate the patient to do the, also the resuscitation as well as the other procedures. And I have to say that the simulation center is one of the most um, um, interested place by students and they want to really go there and practice everything because it is then fantastically uh, improved when you are getting into the operating room or 
close to the patient at the bedside. And also for those who, who are doing pharmacy or you know the other parts, they can go to the laboratory and they can have the hands-on uh, in that field too. As you can see here, we have the work placement and practical classes. The students, as I said, really enjoy the broad access to the hospitals. They have access to different types of specialists during obviously all these courses. They acquire professional knowledge and skills from practitioners. And I have to say that usually the group of the student is 24 divided by two. So that means 12. And then the small groups which are attached to the doctor is between four and six students per doctor. So you have a very close contact and then you can really learn a very practical things uh, in the medicine. Um, obviously, the other part is, apart from the education, is research. And you can see here, uh, the research is carried out in our medical school in different areas like medical sciences, clinical laboratory medicine, medis medical biology and biotechnology, health sciences, public health, nursing and midwifery and many related fields of the interest. So you will find a broad range of different things. The only thing is that you should be interested and you should be eager to do certain things. And obviously students, you can imagine that university without students is nothing. So that's why we care a lot about our students. And when you come here, obviously you will be not only welcome, but I think we'll take care of you in a very nice way way. You can see some pictures of our students. And as I said, we have over 6,000 uh, students for bachelor and master degree. Among them is 392 right now international students. We have a nice lab library facilities. We have, you know, this is one of the students presenting something in front of the patient. And this is just gathering of the students. As you can see here, we have international students from all over the world. This is some of the countries named here. You can easily find India, as you can see here, and we'll be more than happy to have the students from India in a bigger amount than that what we have right now. And I think Mr. Sujin Cherian will do even better job than that what is till now, and we'll have more applicants from India. So you are all welcome. Obviously, uh, the student's life it's not only science, it's not only uh, research, it's not only practice, but then there are additional things. And I think you have to remember that apart from the very important student scientific society, which is having around 60 active students research clubs, for example, me being a vascular surgeon, we have a very active now uh, vascular surgery club where the students can get together together with our, us as a doctors, they can go with us to the operating room, they can help us, they can do everything, they can also do the research. So I think there are several different possibilities. You see the other possibilities for the students and do not forget that you can also be, if you are having a very nice voice, a part of the Collegium Medicum Choir. And the choir is well known, is traveling all over the world, getting a lot of, awards because as you can see here they really sing very nicely but anyway this is the part of the student's life apart from the scientific thing campus and clinical facilities we have different uh, lecture halls different places where we are gathering the students and uh, even more are planned to be built probably the, the end of this year and the beginning of the next year Few say a few words about our city, Bydgoszcz. Um, this is the eighth largest city, biggest city in Poland. It is the capital of the Kujawian Pomeranian region, uh, which is having over two million inhabitants. The area is um, of the city is uh, the city was founded in 1346 by Polish king Casimir the Great. Area is what, what you can see 176 kilometers. Population is over 350,000. Warsaw, in comparison, is 1.7, 1.8 million. We have 15 different higher education institu institutions, that means uh, polytechnical schools as well as universities. And the transport, it's very easy to get 
by train. It's easy to go to the Nikolaus Copernicus in Torrens, only 45 kilometers, around 35 minutes travel by train. And the transport airport, we have airports, so you can travel. And the airport is only three kilometers from the center of the city, so it's really uh, easy access. And uh, when you come here, it's all easy to get to the center of the city. And that's what you can see here, a picture of Belgosch. What about the accommodation? We are very proud of you know the building which is which you can see here. This is the students' dormitory. Uh, in majority part of this students' dormitory is related to international students. So if you apply fast right after being accepted to our medical school, obviously you can apply and you can get a very nice room, as you can see here, with one or two beds, and then uh, with a kitchen and all these uh, facilities. This is another facility where we have the uh, place of uh, anatomy and um, you can do also the sections, the autopsy of, of, um, of the human beings. Uh, so you can learn anatomy directly from the human body, which is not very easy right now in other schools, but we are very well organized and that is the possibility which you can, you can get. And we have at least two big university hospitals. This is the biggest hospital, Antonio Juras University Hospital number one. This is a new building which was just uh, attached to the older one. Uh, right now, there is a construction of the huge Institute of Pediatrics, which will be ready within two years. And just recently, we opened up a new cardiac surgery department with one of the most modern hybrid room for cardiac surgery. So this is in University Hospital number one, and this is the University Hospital number two, which is in another part of our city. And it's also developing very nicely and very fast. Behind this main building, the new one is going to be ready by the end of this year, again, with a very nice facilities for the students. And we have, apart from these big hospitals, we have the very famous oncology center, which is rating number one in Poland for oncology disease. Also the pulmonology center, military research hospital, infectious disease hospital, polyclinical hospital, children hospital, and so on. So I think we are well equipped and we can provide you with a very good education. Medical library, obviously there are plenty of different books and journals, but right now, you can be, when you become a student of our medical school, you will get a direct access to obviously the internet as well as to the um, uh, electronic approach to majority of the books as well as journals. And that should help you because sitting in your student's dormitory, you can easily reach different journals and different medical publications. So. I have to thank you for your attention. I think it was not too long for you. And now it's up to you. If you choose our medical school, as I said, we will be very happy to host you here and obviously to provide you with one of the best medical education, not only in my country, but I think in that part of Europe. So welcome to Poland, welcome to Bydgoszcz, welcome to Collegium Medicum in Bydgoszcz. Thank you once again. Dear Professor, thank you very much for the um, presentation that you have breathed a lot. You have explained a lot about the university. You have explained a lot about the possibility of uh, further specialization and licensing and practicing in Europe, that Poland is as, uh, as a member of the European Union country, that the student after the education can practice in Europe. So uh, about the academics, also the curriculum as well, everything is well explained in a very short time of uh, time frame that I know that it is just 20 minutes, 25 minutes, that it's not easy to explain everything, but it was super. It was super. Thank you. That Thank you. We Thank got you. All, all, all of the information here. Uh, now we have uh, the time for the Q&A, uh, Q that the questions and answers that any of the students who would like to ask questions, they, they, they can ask questions directly to the professor. And if anybody wants our support to translate or moderate, uh, your questions uh, to get the answer from the professor, we can help you. Or you can come to the chat box and ask questions. By the time we have uh, students from the campus, uh, Mr. Kevin will be uh, um, representing the campus. 
the students, the ongoing students in the campus, and he will have a few words for the students who are looking forward for uh, this medical university's education. Kevin is getting connected by the time uh, Mr. Um, Dr. Andrit Karun, who is the alumni of the university, who is currently in UK, who started uh, the path of specialization in UK, also will join us and will uh, share his experience of six years of wonderful journey he already had in the university and how he reached um, UK. Now, this is the time for Kevin. Kevin, please have some words for the new students. Hi guys, I'm, I'm a third year medical student here. Um, I think one of the best things that you notice when you come here in first year is that everyone is from different parts of the world. So you'll get to understand different cultures and then everyone's in the same boat. 100% that like the new experiences you'll learn as well in a new country, especially like Poland and how welcoming the people and the staff are at the university is like another homecoming feeling, especially coming from like back home in, in like India where everyone is like your, you know, in relations, all this. So coming here, new experiences is one of the main things. Definitely the facilities nearby as well, the student dormitory, if you're able to get accommodation here, it's like the, one of the best areas here. You have all the local shops, you have um, the university buildings within 10 to 15 minute um, time frame by getting on the bus or walking. Um, and studies wise, first year, like anatomy. Anatomy is the queen of medicine, as uh, Professor Yavian says. You'll get to meet like um, a lot of professors like Professor Spinda, Professor Badura, these professors I'm still in touch with in third year and you get to meet them throughout your medical course. And they're like, I definitely say that like the top professors in Poland. So a lot of experiences you'll learn in terms of academically, like the university, university is able to provide, but also there's like extracurricular. So we still have football um, going on once a week. We still have other organizations such as Multicultural Students Association, um, Irish Students Association. We always do a lot of events for the students as well. So there's a good balance between academic life and also the extracurricular life because both aspects are important in the future world anyway. And um, you need to have a good balance in social life, but also take care of mental health and academic study as well. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks if for your if, if I may, Kevin, so nice to see you. But I think nice to see you. being being a student here in Poland, maybe you should say a few words about the economy. That means how easy is life here in our city, how much certain things cost, what you can afford, mm -hmm. what you cannot afford, because from your perspective, it will look different than from mine. So that's maybe mm -hmm. you can say a few words about that. Perfect, perfect. So um I'm originally I was born in India, but I live in Ireland. So for us, one euro is around like 4.6 what it. So for us, it's a good uh, exchange rate. I think even um, rupees, it's not that bad as well. Everything is quite cheap here around. So like um, in terms of getting like local groceries, even taking the bus is very, very cheap um, compared to back home. Um, trams are very efficient. The buses are actually really, really good here. There's a lot of apps that you can download as well. I think when you're coming into the university, the office downstairs will be able to provide you with a lot of um, the apps that can help you when you're here. The taxi app is really, really reliable. So you can get taxis at a very cheap price too. Um, local groceries and everything isn't too expensive as well. Um, like when you're here, you're kind of, your parents don't do anything for you. So this is all like you taking care of yourself, you know? So you're, you're growing up in this stage of life. So 100% you'll be able to manage your expenses because of the um, local shops and everything. The prices aren't too bad. Um, I think other than that, there's gyms as well. Local gyms are like around 18 euros. So it's like 79 zwotiv per, per month, which is, I think is a really good deal as well for students. It's a really big gym. Gyms are here. Um, football as well, usually free for students. And um, the PE hall will uh, offer like, bat we have um, volleyball, badminton, basketball, our whole, our own university has a football team, university basketball team as well, where we conduct tournaments with other colleges too. So 100% financially, it's actually a really good deal, especially if you get um, accommodation in the dormitory. I think it's a good um, opportunity because you get really good facilities for the price they're offering in the dormitory. 
I'm accommodation wise, yeah, that's clear. Food wise, it's fine. Transport's really good as well. I'm very reliable. Bolt is the one thing that we don't have that like that access in Ireland because it's actually very expensive to get taxis. But the fact that you can get cheap taxis really quickly as well, I think is like a big, a big win here anyway. So it's a lot easier to get to class just in case you miss the bus, for example, in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for adding all this information. Uh, I am also watching um, here uh, the chat. And Sujin, I don't know what is the plan, but there are at least two questions. Should I respond to them right now? Yes, sir, please. Okay. Um, one of the questions is, could you uh, please provide a quick overview of the university's medical program? I mean, um, uh, if I want, want to say quick, then obviously, as I said, the medical study is six years. And Kevin, please correct me because you you were the student, so you know exactly how it was. And the first two years are much more theoretical than practical. So all you have to get the sort of basic uh, uh, knowledge, including such a things like anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, uh, starting also with microbiology, all the things which are, you know, maybe for new students can be difficult at the beginning because this is a huge change from the high school. You learn in high school in a completely different way than here at the medical schools. Unfortunately, in front of you will be a several thick books which you will have to study hard. But if you learn everything within the two years as so-called the basic thing, then obviously starting the clinic at the third year will be much easier for you than to understand all the things which can be related to the clinical work. And then in the clinic, as, as I already said, you will go through different clinics, uh, even in a very narrow fields, just allowing you to get some information. How do we treat the patient? You know, how we diagnose the patient, what sort of medicamentation, medication the patient should get and so on. So I have to say that it very much depends on you. If you are a very consistent student who wants to learn something, a very active, no one will stop you in getting some information, but you need to be an active thing and also trying to get the information from us. Kevin, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, so um, the first year you'll go through the main subjects, so anatomy, histology, biochemistry. So you'll do these three subjects throughout the year. In the second year, we had pathophysiology. Genetics was the second largest, including immunology. But then obviously we have physiology as well. So that will branch off of the anatomy you learn in first year with a mix of biochemistry as well. I'm a currently a third year medical student. So our, even our first year um, medical placements was more the nursing aspect. So you have to kind of figure out the, um, the, the lifestyle of like doctors and nurses, how they work in the community. So that was more of the main focus in first year. So you kind of get a basic understanding of how the team works like a medical team works in a hospital or any other institution. In second year, we had emergency medicine for a one month placement after the end. And um, that was for two weeks and then family medicine for two weeks. So this is again, not nothing in depth, but it was like kind of overall, you'll go through like different styles of cases. But again, this is just to get you in touch with 30 years at work. So that's like getting patient history, like Professor Yavin was saying, the medications, what medications you need to give, these kind of things. So you'll get like a basic understanding in second year. Um, and then third year is when your actual clinicals will start. So we'll have classes from 8 to 12 every day in um, our Bijel Hospital or um, Urash Hospital too. So we'll go there in scrubs and then we'll follow some doctors. They'll go through some of the protocols and then we'll actually be able to interact with patients as well. And they'll be able to help translate just in case the patient won't be able to answer our questions. But um, it's actually third year um, is when internal medicine starts. So you'll be able to go into fields you're interested in or get an overall understanding of like each of the fields. Because from fourth year, we have like proper blocks like pediatrics, family medicine. Right now we have like introduction to pediatrics, introduction to surgery. So I think those are the main things. Third year is mainly like the professor was saying, we have microbiology this year, pharmacology. And then we also microbiology, pharmacology, and we have 
pathomorphology. Those are the three subjects from third year. Yeah. And um, that will branch off into, the, again, this is all like basic. So we have to learn everything fully in the first go. And then when we apply it to their clinical settings, so during our placements, we can learn a lot more. So I think in terms of experience wise, the best way to actually learn is doing your placements and having fun doing your placements as well. I feel like when I did a lot of placements throughout my holiday, when I came back, I was able to do the clinical placements a lot better. I was able to understand things a lot better. So those are the main things. I mean, I'm only in, up until third year, but for my senior friends, more of the clinicals will start again from fourth, but we're getting an introduction to the two to three week blocks of clinical placements in third years. Okay, thank you very much for all this explanation because, you know, being a student, you know that from a little bit other perspective than me, and I think the applicants are happy to hear mm -hmm. that from you. Thanks so much. Okay, if uh, another question is about the fee of uh, our medical school. No, right now, it's, I think, around 12,000 euro, and it is divided in two parts, so you have to pay semester by semester. So you divide this 12,000, because it depends on the exchange rate, but it's, I think, around 12,000 uh, euro right now. So if you divide in two, so that will be around 6,500 6, or something like that right now uh, for the semester. The important thing is that, um, obviously, if you decide to come, uh, we are expecting you to, to do the payment on time, because otherwise, uh, there are different regulations, but that will be uh, talked to you in details when you decide to apply to our medical school. Um, and the, another question is, is there any entrance examination before admission? Uh, you may know that uh, we are taking the applicants in the way like this. First, we look into the quality of your um uh, certification i mean the, the the final certificate from the high school the living certificate because in ireland for example they call it living certificate in different countries it looks different but anyway uh, this is the certificate which we are trying to assess according to the grades you are getting there and then there is an obligatory interview normally the interview is by internet and there are usually three major main questions you should be prepared. The first one is usually why you want to be a medical doctor. Then we are trying to, to ask you about um, uh, uh, certain, let's say, biological things uh, in general, just to see what is your knowledge. But this is not checking your knowledge, but just getting a sort of insight. How much do you know about biology? chemistry and physics. These are three main topics which the commission, which is of three people, is trying to, to ask you. And the third is usually your knowledge about our country. Kevin, you went through this interview. Maybe you can share your impression and your view from the interview. So um, during the interview, they'll ask the basic questions like, tell me a bit about yourself your other experiences you've learned throughout your educational uh, journey in, in school. Like they'll get to gauge kind of what kind of person you are as well. Um, if you're open to do new challenges other than just the academic as well. And then during the end of the interview, we'll have five questions. So for me, I had um, Dr. Badura was asking me five questions and it can vary from chemistry, physics, or even um, biology as well. It's nothing too, um, complex it's whatever you've kind of studied throughout your journey and um, through your college uh, to your school life but um it's just like i don't know it's it's in a way the interview isn't too stressful as well because the way they kind of lead on to the question they can see that sometimes students can be nervous during the interview but when they do answer like they're like okay they're, they'll be able to answer the questions it's not too difficult like i did some prep for the interview but um, most of the questions weren't too difficult because we had our finals and then I had the interview a month after. So I had to study again for the interview. But it seemed like the way they were gauging it is more like what kind of person you are, but also like if you're able to apply the knowledge you kind of gained, nothing too like complex, but like basic, but into like uh, practical reasoning. Yeah. So in a good way, it's like, it was good. I think there was three people interviewing us as well. Um, I, I've only met Dr. Badura, the other two staff, I think 
I haven't had classes with yet. So it doesn't, it's not a stressful interview. 100% you should just go in with confidence and kind of show them what kind of students you are. And then they'll be able to take that into consideration when allotting your placements. Yeah. And we have to remember, because I forgot to say about the test, you, you had also the test, yes, when you when you were applying, yeah? Um, I, we had, I, when I applied, we had COVID going on. Yeah. So yeah. we had, um, so we had to submit our grades from uh, okay. our leaving cert and also yeah. every exam up until the interview. Yeah. That was our criteria. That, so we had to have a certain average. Yeah. So that changed a little bit from two years because now uh, what we have, we have a short test before because the number of applicants is growing so fast and so much that that is a sort of uh, um, by making a test, an introductory test to interview is giving us, you know, a sort of um, knowledge who should come to the interview or not. So that's, please be prepared for that sort of thing right now. It, it just started two years ago. And this is how do we, how do we now um, try to get, you know, the applicants, you know, for those who wants to be a, a future students <clears throat> to our medical school. So first the leaving certificate from your high school, then the test, and finally the interview. In the middle, I would like to thank uh, and introduce uh, Kevin once again. That Kevin is one of the official in the Multinational Students Association, the MSA Bidgost. Uh, he is representing um, the, his year, I think, if I'm not wrong. So he is very he is a very active student. Like him, all of the students are very supportive uh, in the campus. When a first year student comes in, uh, there are a lot of helping hands to support the students. My nephew, for the information of all the participants, my nephew is also a student the first year. Uh, he asked me about that, uh, uh, uncle, to, the, to which university must I go for the medical education? I said that if you ask me about the medical education, I have no words than CMNCU, Collegium Medical Nicholas Copernicus University. That is only the name I say about the medical education. Why? Because I see, I foresee the uh, result that the student can expect, and he is now in the first year. Uh, he said his parents also that, yes, I have uh, attended many sessions of uh, the university, I have gone to the website, and I have no other choice, I will be going only to CMNCU. And he was in the in the session, he left in between, I think, because he has the first semester examination. Mm -hmm. uh, by uh, requesting the privilege to introduce our successful alumni, uh, Mr. or I said Dr. Anirudh Karun, he is currently in UK, but he uh, is here, for, here in India for just... 10 days vacation, and he accepted my request to uh, be a participant in the webinar, and he will take two to three minutes to share his experience with the permission of Professor. Yeah. Hello, Annie. Uh, your, your mic is mute. Any mic mute on? Yes. Hello. Could you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Yes. So I'm presenting here as one of the alumni of CMU. Okay. So I just finished my studies last year and now working as a foundation doctor in UK. So first of all, I want to say hello to my fellow friend, Kevin. And of course, my father, Professor, Professor Yavin, I think you guys are doing good. <laughs> As an alumni, I just want to say, maybe the process has gone through most of the studies, academics, cultural part, everything. So just as a doctor who has completed six years, I just want to tell you that it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, actually. It's a six-year program. You want to go step by step. And of course, there will be some failure. Annie, most of the excuse me, Annie. Could you please check your device once again? The voice is not very clear because you are, your words are very precious as an alumni. We would like to listen to you at its best.
Hello. We can hear you now. Perfect. Okay. So as an alumni, I just want to tell you that for the future students, it's not a sprint, actually. It's a marathon. It's a six-year program, guys. So if you are coming and joining in a medical school anywhere in the world, especially in Poland, it's a six-year program. So you want to go step by step, starting from anatomy. And I know we all are coming from Kerala and everything, the education is different as from Europe. Everything is different. So at first, you will be finding much different culture, is culture-wise, study-wise, everything will be different. Because as in Kerala, I studied in Kerala for last 17 years, then I moved to Europe. So I know how the Kerala education is. It's more or like spoon feeding. But when you come to Europe in education, it's more or like you are the student and you are the teacher. Of course, there will be a lecturer, but they are not the teachers. They are the lecturers. So you should take effort to study as much as you can, starting from the anatomy, and you go to physiology, and you go to clinics. It's a six-year program. So you go step by step. And of course, there will be some failures, and there will be step backs, which is for everyone life, there will be a step back, for sure. But don't be depressed. Just go through, and I'm sure that all of you guys will pass as a good doctors. And it's actually a privilege. For, for me, it's a privilege that I would say it's really a privilege for me to study in CMUMK as in academics and in culture because you can have an interaction with a lot of people across all around the world. And when it comes to the academics, I can guarantee you that the clinics are really good and the anatomy because the anatomy is the basic and the cue of the medicine so the anatomy is really good and we go to physiology which is really good teachers and all teachers and the lectures are really supportive so don't worry about all those things just follow your heart and if you're really into medicine follow and you you will be succeed for sure but just to make sure if there is any step backs stick on your plan think one day you all became a good doctors so after six years, well, after six years, it will be like you will be dreaming yourself became a doctor. And I've been in that part, actually, because last year there was Sujin, sir, for our graduation. And he was so happy seeing as our first, I think we are the first batch, right? Of course, yeah. you are the first batch. The first batch is being graduated. He is so happy. So I'm the first batch of NCU, sorry first batch of life planner I coming to Poland. We don't have any Kerala friends there, but all everybody, the, every staff, every students in SU, NCU was really supportive for us. And of course, you, you everybody will be doing fine for sure. <laughs> Anirudh, thank you very much for all these comments. I want to tell you that remember April 9th, in Opera Nova in Belgos, we are organizing the 15th anniversary mm -hmm. of the English division in our medical school. So plan your trip, come visit us. We'll be more than happy to have you. Oh, we expect so. over 400 people coming for the event. So that's something worth, worth to remember, yeah? Of course, thank you so much. April thank you so much yes. for the invitation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is there something and, else I should add? I don't know if there is any question. And it, ju and it just, yeah, you, you, you narrated very well. That just one point that how did you reach UK? That what was the format that you have to complete? You had to complete to reach UK. So basically, it, when I reached UK, there was an exam called situation judgment test. And there is also an occupational English test. But when you, I don't know what going to happen after six years, to be honest, each year the test will be changing or there will be a specific test. So basically, it's a good opportunity. If you study in Europe, you can work in any part of Europe if you are proficient in their own language. And working as in UK, there should be some form of test. And if you met the certain criteria and you have certain academics, Marks, you will be, of course, you will be granted a place in UK as a doctor. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, if I may to add something like this,
because uh, you mentioned that obviously all Indian people speak quite good English. So for you, it's much easier to go to UK, Canada or the United States. But what I know now, some of um, your friends uh, are starting to learn Polish and some of them are planning to stay in Poland. And I have to tell you, for all these applicants, if you will be interested in learning Poland, Polish, and after six years to pass the LEC test, which is the final exam, and then work in Poland, there is plenty of space for doctors to work in Poland. The only thing is the Polish language. So please remember and keep it in mind that not only, you know, Ireland, UK, USA, or Canada, or Australia is welcoming you, but also Poland is also open for a new doctors from abroad. So remember that. Just to add one thing, guys, Polish people are really nice. Trust me. They are really nice. They're really supportive. So if you, I think we have a Polish language for two years studying in university. So yeah. that will give you a basic of Polish language. And if you want to study more, there is a language a school in Bidgush is there? Yes. So you can, yeah, apply, you can yeah. apply through the language school and cover the lag, which is not a difficult exam. Mm -hmm. And you can work as in Poland or probably anywhere in the world. Yes. Thank you, Anadut. Thank you so you much. You made me emotional also that I, I uh, you are my first best friend and uh, I'm so much of affectionate with these students. I'm happy and I never, I never must miss uh, an opportunity to visit the campus and meet my students. Uh, I do it every year, maybe at, le at least once or twice in a year. Uh, this year also I have different uh, uh, opportunities as the, the, the 15th year anniversary of the English division and the, then my the, the uh, graduation ceremony of my second batch is coming up. And of course, there's a multicultural day. So we have a great plan for this year. So uh, Sorry, Mr. And... Sir, I just want to add one more thing. Sorry, just one more thing, because I know you all guys are going after your higher studies. That's like 18 years. So for the six years, if you came through any problem, you can directly contact the Sujin sir. He's really supportive person. He will do whatever he can do that which make your life so much easier in Poland. So you can directly contact him. He is so much helpful person, really. Yeah, I fully agree with this. I fully agree with this because it is very important to have someone who is so helpful like Sujin. So uh, you can rely on him, no doubts about that. Professor, with your uh, permission once again, um uh, my my nephew he is online he said that oh i didn't go i am here fantastic so go ahead I yes. like he is the first year student the first semester student we can give him one minute to uh, share his experience that as a first year student go ahead how chris is you are welcome to uh share a few words about how supportive with your seniors how supportive is the university for you uh to start with as a medical student So you can unmute your mic now. Hi, everyone. Uh, hello. My name is Chris. Uh, hello, Professor. Hi, Kevin. Uh, I'm a first year student in uh, CMUMK now. Uh, so far, I've, uh, I came here last October, and so far, my experience is great. And about the, uh, I guess Kevin has already said most of the stuff that you guys would have to know about the university. And Kevin is my kitchen mate, <laughs> so Kevin is one of the uh, one of the seniors uh, who is very helpful to me. And to be honest, first thing that I loved about the university after coming here was the relationship that the seniors and the junior students have because that's the first thing that i've uh felt before uh when going to the school uh colleges that um all the seniors are very helpful to be honest there is no kind of separation as seniors or juniors back in india uh i've heard from my friends that there is ragging and all in india but there is nothing like that here like 
I've literally gone to Warsaw with my seniors as friends and we play around and we mess around and they help us a lot when it comes to, you know, uh, giving us the uh, studies, uh, study materials and all that stuff. Uh, and they've been very helpful. Whenever I have a doubt, I just knock on the other side of my kitchen door, cover, and I ask, bro, can you help me out with this? And he helps me out. And all the seniors are like that. They're very helpful, uh, very kind, uh, very pleasant. You can just approach them anytime you want. And first of all, coming to a new place, we don't know what to do, uh, especially uh, a lot of things, you know, transport, traveling, food. Uh, we, we don't, we might not know anything in Bitgosh at first, but uh, even if, uh, uh, you, first of all, you can ask your seniors or even if you go down to this and ask the people in the office in the dormitory they're also very helpful they'll provide you with all the information that you want uh so in total uh i didn't have any problem navigating through poland or like finding out uh, a bit gosh or like uh any problem even if it, if it is for applying for trc or anything uh, the seniors helped me out uh even in the uh, downstairs in the office uh, i asked them if they could help me book the dates and they helped me regarding that uh for everything there is help you don't have to feel uh you know that you're alone here there's always people to take care of you and help you and you know guide you in the right way so yeah it, it is wonderful here and if you, if you want to so far about my studies as in first year i had anatomy biochemistry and um, histology cell bio embryology and subjects like that um so far uh, i had practicals as well as uh, theoretical uh, practicals as well as lecture classes uh, both were really fun uh, we had uh, practical classes the one thing that i find unique about uh, studying here is that back in our place we have all the classes in one campus but uh here the classes is like uh, spread over the whole city so literally going to different classes is like is a journey so we can uh, catch the bus and go to the next place and it, it's not like back in india like uh, I, I was born and raised in gulf so it's kind of similar there as in india as well so we don't have a fixed time limit from 8 a.m. in the morning to 2 p.m., uh, which is really tiring, but it is not like that here. We have classes uh, split uh, in different times uh, in a week. So we have time to relax after each class. At the same time, we'll be able to prepare for the next class. So there is uh, a balance between studies as well as, you know, time for us to, you know, relax. So it's not that hard, and especially the stress level, uh, I, I was really scared uh, the medical life or medical school will be really, you know, stressful. It is stressful. I'm not saying it's not easy, but comparatively, if you compare it with the uh, other uh, in India and all, the teachers are very nice. The professors are really nice. They help us in a lot of ways and they help us study a lot. Uh, if we have any doubts, we can directly approach them and they'll be really kind enough to help us out. Uh, so there is, uh, so far the great, the journey has been really great. So who all are try, uh, thinking of coming to Poland and I would urge you to come here because studying in Europe is, uh, you know, uh, very expensive, but Poland being a country, uh, which provides us with this education in a very, uh, affordable manner. I feel like all the students who are attending this should make sure that they use this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And uh, thank you, Kevin, once again, that uh, he's handling the chat box. He's answering to many of the questions. He briefed it uh, in the most nice way. And there are two questions left, I think, uh, uh, from Mr. Akil. That one is that is the six years is inclusive of uh, internship. Yes. If I may ask, answer that, yes, right now, because something like four years ago, there was a change in the program of medical education. Now the sixth year is a sort of internship. So you have only practical year moving from one field to another. So let's say from surgery to internal medicine, then to pediatrics, to orthopedics, anesthesiology, and so on. So by the end of the sixth year, you can get quite a lot of practical knowledge in medicine. Yeah, there's another question about, uh, is there any chance of scholarship for the international students while they are students in the university? For a time being, we do not have a scholarship, but 
I have to tell you that we are discussing right now this. And you have to remember that this year, within them two months, we'll be having a great election of the new board of, that means the rectors, deans, and so on. And I have already provided that sort of information that we will probably need a sort of uh, support in the form of scholarship. But that will be discussed when we have a new board starting the October the 1st this year. But anyway, we are aware of this problem and we are trying to find the sources to get some money to support at least those who cannot have enough money to study our medical school. So this is in our agenda, but till now I cannot tell you the final things. We think about that, no doubts. Professor, there is a um, uh, question noted by one of the students that uh, they, they they are curious about uh, curious to know about the level of education, which is the, our program is integrated or uniform master degree in medicine, which is very different than uh, what is in India. In India, we have undergraduate degree program, then we have master degree program. Here in the CMNCU, we have uh, both together that it's it's an integrated master degree program. So which is the level of education that we can expect and how it is, how is it treated in the developed countries like UK and Germany? Uh, I mean, uh, as, as, as I already said, uh, the medicine here is on the level of master degree. And this is comparable to that, what the students can get in Germany, in France, in Spain, and so on, okay? So the program is comparable. But the thing is that um, the amount of certain fields are different in different universities, not only between the countries, but also within the Poland, different medical schools, they have a different program, that means amount of hours you will spend, let's say, in surgery in comparison to internal medicine or in gynecology and obstetrics in comparison, let's say, to pediatrics or something like that. So that's why moving from one medical school to another medical school during the program, medical program, is not easy because then, especially at the year third, fourth or fifth, then you have to, you know, at additional hours and the medical schools are not interested in it. But altogether, when you get the master degree, and it doesn't matter if this is in Poland or if this is in uh, Slovakia or in Hungary or in Germany or France, this is within the European Union is the same. So you are recognized with that sort of diploma in these countries. Great. So uh, this is the basic basic interest of the students that uh, after education, how can they uh, reach or settle back in Europe itself or to go to UK? And this uh, this uh, um, the way you explain the things that they give, they, they get a clear idea about how can they settle back in uh, Europe and how valuable this education is. Um, you know, I don't know if Dr. Karun is still because he went through all this program to getting a permission to work in the UK, for example. So he would be a good guy who could give you the full answer how to go through all these exams and get, you know, the position in the countries like UK, probably USA and Canada. Um, he already left uh, the session that he, as I told you, that he has only just nine, ten days in India. So he, okay. he is in the middle of a journey to some other places. So uh, it's just because that I requested that, yeah, if you are one of our successful alumni, please spend 10, 15 minutes with us. And that's how he uh, participated okay. in, the, in the getting on. Yeah. But, but Sujin, the only thing I can tell you for those who will be planning, you know, to go to other countries and so on, my office is very much open and very helpful in all these things. So it shouldn't be any problem because I am signing every year several papers going, you know, to the office in UK, where those who are wanting to work there require certain papers. And we are doing that here. So it shouldn't be any problem. We are very helpful in providing all these necessary documents. So there is no problem with that. Uh, for the last five, six years, I haven't heard any problem. And every of these papers issued by my office was accepted in the UK. So it, was, it wasn't any problem, you know, to get that. 
and there are the possibilities of the students to uh, um, uh, exchange their programs for one or two semesters in another country also as the part of Erasmus, uh, yeah. which is another possibility. Yes, th there is such a possibility, no doubts about that. The only thing is, I don't know if, um, because uh, Erasmus is usually within the European countries. So I don't know how does this work, in fact, for you know the people coming from India, China, or the other countries from Asia. So that's, I will have to, I do not have a complete answer for the time being. So uh, I, I cannot say anything more about that. Okay. I don't find any other questions here. I think almost everybody got the uh, uh, answers for their doubts. Kevin, do you have anything to add? Um, I'm just looking at all the other the questions that I replied to, and I was seeing if there's anything else that I need to add. Other than that, like it's just the placements. It's all again up to you. One month is the requirement. Yeah. But like, I did um. I did two and a half months, I think, this in after second year. So I did it in India, Ireland, and I did a bit in Poland before I went back as well during my finals. I'm more of a practical learner. So academically, like reading books and things, I'm not as interested as on hands-on uh, medical experience. So I like going to hospitals and learning about cases, listening to patients, like taking blood tests, these kind of things. I prefer more than like just sitting and reading a book kind of thing, you know? So 100%, it's all up to you whether you want to take this opportunity to the max like again the minimal requirements for the placements is one month it changes within blocks or it, it increases throughout your senior years as well as professor yavin was saying but it doesn't mean just because you have one month you only need to do one month if you're interested like m most of the time when you're so in tune with your academic lifestyle going to class 8 to 12 and then you have a three month break like you feel like doing nothing with my life kind of thing so even to go like have fun, like I have fun going into the hospitals, you don't have to take it seriously as placements, but go meet the doctors, follow them around, make notes on interesting cases, come back, look over them. It gives you that busyness that you have throughout the year, because over the summer when I don't do anything, like, I don't know, the days go on more boring, and then I'd rather do something more productive or even interesting throughout the time. But make sure, as I say this, that you take breaks. Because the academic year will be stressful. Just because there's a lot of help doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You still have to put in the work. So make sure the three months, it might seem like three months is a long time, but you'll have placements for a month. And then if, say, for example, you're going to, for me, I go to India for a month. So that's another month cut off for me. So you'll have a month to kind of rest your um, yourself, mental health, and then get prepared for the next year coming. So 100%, like, there's a lot of opportunities. Again, I don't think everything can be answered in one call. But any, if any parents or any students has any concerns, obviously they can contact Sujin Sir, Professor Yavin, or any of any of the students here as well. And I think they can get an in-depth of how college is here. And um, there's a lot of, uh, I think some of the students may already have seen, like, the vlogs. Like, we had a previous student, Jeevan, and uh, he left last year as well. He graduated, and um, he used to vlog certain uh, lifestyle I think his day-to-day -day life in certain moments his exams and then the other events example like multicultural day even the 10th anniversary event is actually up there on YouTube as well so you can kind of get to see the kind of lifestyle students have outside of academics but also throughout their academic journey as well so 100% like if you have any other questions you can always ask us and like we're here the seniors are here so don't worry well I'm basically doing whatever I got when I came here so I had um, Vevin and Jason uh, to take care of me when I came here and then they kind of led me onto the right path in terms of like MSA so they're like my Annas so 100% they have my back so I likewise if you guys need anything you can always let us know and um, it's actually easy especially in the dormitory to ask for help because if you need to go you just need to go up a floor and then knock on the door and be like um, do you have any notes or anything on this or do you have any advice it's not just about academic advice like you'll know a lot of um, students, even in first year, might be in of different ages, like 23, 24. But the experience you learn throughout the thing, throughout your medical um, journey, even if you're a third year who's like 20, I think the experience you gain in college makes you like far greater in terms of life, like the lessons you learn throughout college, especially back home. 
your parents would do anything, everything for you, as in like cooking, cleaning, all of this. Your job is just to study. When you come here, you learn as a human as well. You kind of have to, you know, you're you're a man now. You're you're grown up, so you have to start looking after yourself because in the end, it's all it's all for us. So we have to do as much as we can with your resources provided. Like I learned how to cook. I learned how to do all of this when I came here. I didn't know any of this. My job was just to study back home. But then when I came here, I had to adapt as in learning how to cook, clean, make, take care of, taking care of myself, like mentally, physically, not relying on other people. You, it definitely makes you more independent and the confidence you get and the life journeys and experiences throughout your medical journey is by far the best thing I'd say. Because I know a lot of friends who did their college back in Ireland as well, because I live in Ireland now. And they're saying like, they haven't had that much opportunity to kind of go outside, live a new lifestyle. So I think for the people who like this challenge, 100%, I'd recommend this opportunity. And it's definitely worthwhile. You'll make a lot of memories here and you can always like teach other people that you don't have to take the easy way out. Like these kind of like, I know it's a difficult step to move from your own country to um, go and study medicine. But like a lot of people would love this opportunity because medicine is always a high value um aspect of our profession anyway and a lot of students are dying to do medicine so definitely take the opportunity try to learn as much as you can while you're here as well in terms of um outside of academic skills too because you'll be busy with classes so whatever you do on the side is for example sports you know a lot of people do choir there's choirs here um obviously exercising and there's badminton so uh, indians love badminton we always go once a week for badminton Footballs for all the other Europeaners as well. And um, basketball, there's a university um, team as well. And then if you want the academics, we also have the surgical society. And then we have a lot of other societies that um, the university provides as well. So it's a good balance. Everyone's in the same boat. So don't feel like you're on your own. And when everyone moves here, you'll realize that, oh, I'm not the only one kind of suffering with how to cook all of these lifestyle hurdles or problems. Like that's the one thing because you don't feel alone because everyone's in the same boat. And then there's always seniors who can take you in as well to help. So don't hesitate Kevin, this, to ask anything. Uh, Kevin, this is what uh, the students, my first, first batch students also uh, speak about, that they are not just talking about the academics. It's the CMNCU is a place not just for the academics, uh, mm -hmm. including Dr. Andrew said that uh, when, once, he, once he reached the campus, it was just he was just a 17 years old boy. But then he started learning everything, including finance management, managing the kitchen, cleaning, uh, washing clothes, um, a lot of things. And by the end of the education, six years of education, by the age of 23, he is a professional doctor by capable of everything in every sense. And he said that he realized the value of this education once he was in U he reached UK. So once he in, he's in UK, he's very new to that place. He is alone, but he is capable of managing everything. He's independent, really independent. So this is the beauty of this education, the place of transformation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Anyway, thank you. What I've heard from Kevin, it is that this is a fantastic school, apart from medicine, a fantastic school of living. So that's something what you can also count on. Honestly speaking, I have to say that uh, I've got a phone call from my operating theater that are waiting for me right now. So sorry for that. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for taking par part in this uh, in this nice session. And I want to thank Sujin for organizing that. But unfortunately, I will have to go back because I'm still very active vascular surgeon. I have to go back to my operating theater because the patient is waiting. But on the other hand, we are waiting for you for applying to our medical school. And as you have heard, uh, Kevin is a fantastic ambassador of our medical school. Kevin, thank you once again for such a nice words. But all I have to say that I think uh, we are a good medical school. We provide you with a good medical knowledge and studying in our medical school, you can be sure that the future is going to be right, obviously. So welcome to our medical school and thank you very much for your kind invitation here. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you for your very valuable and precious time. Um, thank you. And see you in Bidghost in the month of April. Thank you very much. I would like to take a, a few minutes, like one or two minutes, just one or two minutes to thank uh, first Mr. Kevin. Uh, I would like to introduce him once again, that it's not introduction. I, I must have to reveal one fact that 
this guy is not recruited by me. Mr. Kevin is not recruited by me. He is actually from Ireland. But I just wanted to exemplify the student that this is how almost all of the students there, that they don't mind that they if they are from India, they are from they are recruited by this person or that person, they are from another batch or something like that. They all consider themselves as one group, one community, and it's a beautiful place. And uh, Kevin, I I um, I just get, came to know about him only after once I met him in the campus through Jason and other people. But uh, since then, we are good friends. We are good. Uh, um, we are in good connection. So he also supports the students from India. He, even if he is from Ireland, he is an Irish Indian. Um, if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, I've been Kevin, living there 16 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but he doesn't mind. He he helps everybody. This is how all the students, all the seniors, uh, perform their duties, their responsibilities uh, as a senior student in the medical university. And I thank you, uh, Mr. Krusis, also officially uh, being the part of this uh, webinar. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I know that you've had the examination today. Uh, all the best for your examination. And I have to take, I take the privilege to thank some of the schools, especially Normal Jodi Higher Secondary School, Mundur, uh, Trishur, St. Mary's Residential Higher Secondary School, Trivella, Tokach Residential School, Punilu, Citadel, Higher Secondary School, Rani, St. George, Higher Secondary School, uh, Idiki, Parathod. So there are a lot of schools shown interested in this session that they, they found that it's very valuable. Um, and they have shared the uh, link of the meeting also to their parents and students group as well. And this session is recorded that we can share it with the students and uh, the schools once again that they can go through and they can uh, get to know even if uh, they are currently in the uh, in the edge of the examination, the higher secondary examination. So, uh, and there are other participants also. I would like to thank everybody from the bottom of the heart uh, to uh, for participating in this event and making this event very successful. Thank you, Kevin and Chris, especially. Thank you. No, no worries, sir. No need to say thanks. See you both in uh, in Bitcoin soon in April. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect.